So this uh, video will cover uh, figures from the textbook for our fourth topic, which is uh, DNA polymerase. And uh, this figure comes from chapter four, figure 4.23. Uh, and we are looking at the the chemical the chemistry catalyzed by DNA, DNA polymerase. It's a template uh, directed enzyme. So it's taking information from a template strand. Uh, it's extending the primer strand uh, through this nucleotide nucleotidal transfer reaction. The the activated monomer needed uh, to make this primer strand longer by one unit is the nucleotide uh, deoxynucleotide triphosphate. So there's three phosphate groups, and it's this alpha phosphate that is coming under attack by the primer strands uh, three prime hydroxyl. So this is the three prime OH group. And uh, the pyrophosphate is the, is the leaving group. And so we made the primer strand longer by one unit, and we now have a new three prime hydroxyl group that will serve as the nucleophile in the next cycle of the of the reaction. All of this is um, uh, depicted with more atomic detail uh, based on the crystal structure of the enzyme in the active site. And I just want to highlight in this figure chapter from ch chapter twenty nine, figure twenty nine point five, that there are two magnesium ions. Uh, that are stabilizing the transition state. As the, the three prime, here's the three prime hydroxyl again. As it attacks the, the alpha phosphorus group of the deoxynucleotide triphosphate, there's a, a large accumulation of negative charge on the transition state. As with all of our uh, phosphoryl chemistry, there's a, a penta coordinate, there's a transition state where there are five things attached. Here's one oxygen, two oxygens, three oxygens, a fourth one. And as the nucleophile attacks, and uh, before the leaving group has a chance to leave, there's a, a penta coordinate ph phosphorus, the, the, the purple being phosphorus. And then these, uh, the negative charge is stabilized by these magnesium ions. The magnesium ions, the metal ions, are held in place by aspartate residues that are provided by the active site of DNA polymerase. So here's a overview of what the structure of DNA polymerase looks like. Um, this is chapter 29, figure 29.4. Uh, they, they all have this architecture where there, there's a, a domain called the fingers, the, the palm domain, and, and the thumb. And these serve to sort of wrap around the template and primer strands. And, and also, very importantly, they, they serve to the function of inspecting the incoming nucleotide. The, the key feature of DNA polymerase uh, that makes it such a fascinating uh, system is this idea of very high fidelity. The error rate is, is very low. And for DNA polymerase, it's on the order of one mistake for every 10,000 uh, nucleotide incorporations. So how, how, how can we explain this very low error rate or this very high fidelity? And one answer, is uh, the hydrogen bonds uh, that ensure that we, we have uh, complementarity between Watts and Crick base pairs. But that only explains about an, uh, uh, about half of this, uh, on a logarithmic scale, about half of this precision. And experiments uh, like the one highlighted in figure 29.6 uh, sort of provide evidence that hydrogen bonds cannot be the, the complete story. So in this figure, we're comparing the chemical structure of adenine with an analog that lacks any of the um, hydrogen bond uh, accepting or donating properties of adenine. And this analog, uh, has this, because it has the same shape as adenine, it's able to direct um, the incorporation of thymine, uh, it, both in vitro and also in cells. So. The, this provides a clue that it's not just hydrogen bonds. In, in this case, the hydrogen bonds have been removed, and we still see precise uh, uh, template-directed uh, precision of DNA polymerase. And, and it highlights this idea that it has some, something to do with the shape. 
And the way that shape is enforced is uh, highlighted in these two figures, uh, 29.8 and uh, 29.7. We'll, we'll take a look at this one first. Here we see an adenine thymine base pair. Throw those in. Adenine thymine. And uh, this is at the active site of DNA polymerase. We're seeing the, that the, the minor groove hydrogen bond donors and acceptors are being uh, interrogated by an arginine and a glutamine residue from DNA polymerase. This, this minor groove arrangement of donor and acceptor groups um, is, is conserved for all of the base pairs. We, we have a acceptor, hydrogen bond acceptor here and here, regardless of whether it's TA or AT or GC or CJ. These are universal a common feature of Watson Crick base pairs. So these hydrogen bonds provided by the enzyme to the um, to the to the in, incoming nu nucleotide, checking to see if 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 it's a if it's an honest, um, true Watson Crick base pair. But the, uh, the the enzyme does one more thing to ensure that we have an authentic Watson Crick base pair, and that has to do with uh, this O helix. Uh, that's highlighted here in figure 29.8. It's not labeled O helix uh, in your textbook, but I've added those labels because that's a common language that structural biologists used to refer to, to the structure of DNA, DNA polymerase. And in the O helix, there's this uh, one particular tyrosine residue. It, tyrosine, as you will recall, has this uh, kind of flat structure it's a relatively large uh, amino acid residue, and because of that, it can make several uh, 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 Van der Waals contacts, stacking contacts with the, the the base pairs, with the DNA base pairs. And that's what's happening over here in the, the so-called closed conformation. In the closed conformation, the O helix clamps down over the newly forming base pair, and this tyrosine residue makes these stacking interactions with, with the base pair. And this is only possible if we have an a authentic Watson-Crick base pair. And this movement in the O helix is coupled to uh, subtle changes in the position of these catalytic metal ions, and is absolutely necessary for stabilizing the transition state uh, before we can form a covalent bond between the primer strand and the and the incoming nucleotide. Uh, if if the base pair is, has some defect, if it's not a a authentic Watson Crick base pair, this O helix cannot close completely over over that uh, miss pair, and therefore we cannot catalyze uh, or stabilize the transition state. So catalysis is prevented. Uh, essentially by steric forces. I'm going to draw that out with our energy diagram. Here is uh, no interaction. This is energy. And um, we, we recall that we have large, uh, large repulsive forces that we can use in this case to prevent the wrong answers from getting into the growing uh, DNA chain. Uh, the, the favorable energy, uh, the, the hydrogen bonds and the van der Waals contacts are also important for ensuring the correct nucleotide is, is being incorporated, but it's really the repulsive, uh, the steric re repulsion that prevents the wrong answers from coming into the, uh, be, being catalyzed to become part of the, the, the new piece of DNA.